Hi, this is Julie Thompson, straight from the Mix Conference at Advertising Week, New York, 2011. I'm here with Jonathan Mildenhall from the Coca-Cola Company, Vice President of Global Advertising Strategy and Content Excellence. Sorry, well done. Well done. Hello, good to be here. <laughs> so, you really wowed the crowd just now. Um, we were really fascinated with your storytelling manifesto and the new creative manifesto for the Coca-Cola Company. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, um, uh, well, about a year ago, my boss, a lady called Wendy Clark, uh, she said, uh, Jonathan, we've really got to get ahead of the massive change that is happening in marketing. You know, there's a distribution of creativity, there is a distribution of technology, and uh, we, the Coca-Cola company, need to figure out how to embrace that massive change for the benefit of our company and our brands. So we got everybody together from around the world and uh, we really sweated it for a, a week and we wrote this manifesto in a week uh, and then we produced um, uh, the stimulus around the manifesto and uh, uh, since then we've shared it with the world uh, in the uh, intent of getting feedback from the uh, marketing community at large and evolving it. Well, we were amazed to hear how you know, you have certain brand stories that come from the company, but you also have brand stories that are coming from consumers. How do you manage all of that? Well, it's with excitement, actually, because we learn from, ex uh, from consumers. So um, uh, consumers generate about 80% of the conversation uh, on, say, Brand Coke. That's 80% of creative energy, creative momentum, creative ideas that are coming from outside the organization. So for us, um, it's great because it really gives us a very fertile platform to learn truly what matters and actually take some of those ideas, curate some of those ideas, uh, and then build new Coca-Cola company generated stories that have been informed by those ideas. But how do you, as a marketer, how do you, you know, speak with one voice, control the message? Is there any controlling the message anymore? No, there isn't. Um, uh, consumers and consumer dialogue becomes the brand by default. So our role is to create big, fertile platforms that are universal in their appeal and then inspire consumer conversation in the right way through the content that we put out and then also reward consumers who put out equally inspiring content by curating that and promoting it. But you can't, you have to accept that there is going to be content that's not so good or negative content out there um, but we're in a very privileged position that the overwhelming majority of content that we get for our brands is uh, uh, content that actually enhances the brand promise and and sparks brand love as you talked about and sparks brand love i always say we measure um, brand love and there is a volumetrics behind it but i uh, measure brand love personally by is it cool enough that I'd want to wear the t-shirt? And uh, we get a lot of consumer-generated t-shirts online, I have to say. Is that a Coca-Cola t-shirt? It is indeed. It's a Coca-Cola company t-shirt. I have um, uh, them from about 30 different languages all around the world. Excellent. Well, and that leads me to my next question. How do you, as a content you know, manager, how do you manage all of these campaigns that are going on simultaneously for all your different brands, from Coke to Coke Zero to Fanta? Um, around the world? It's really hard, to be honest. Um, we have no secret formula for that. Um, uh, we uh, are an influence organization. We're not a mandate organization. And so uh, we're relationship dependent. But um, truly, uh, I I've had it proven to me time after time after time, the organization really does align behind a big, wonderful, creative idea. So um, uh, the way we manage each of the brands is to develop big ideas that the whole world sees themselves in and the whole world can take and apply as their very own. Yeah, I loved what you were saying on the stage about um, being brutally simple and, and like open happiness, for example, being a bit of the blindingly obvious that only you as a, a Brit can say properly. But, um, <laughs> But I thought that was really a great uh, sort of directive for the creative community in telling stories digitally. What's your other piece of advice for creatives trying to tell the story digitally? I think that um, uh, if you can keep it brutally simple and if you can keep it emotionally compelling, quite often because um, uh, digital technology can enable the presentation of an awful lot of information, quite often I see so many big ideas get lost because 
they weren't edited down and they didn't become as emotionally compelling and seductive as they could be. I see. So, and one thing you, well, one of the themes that evolved this morning from uh, Randall Rothenberg, the head of the IAB, was that the story is the story. And it was interesting to hear that technology is, an, is now an enabler of creativity. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's interesting because um, uh, my boss always says that the, um, uh, the art of storytelling hasn't changed. It's the medium upon which you tell stories. Uh, and uh, she joked once that uh, if a caveman uh, uh, drew a picture on a pebble and then passed it to somebody else, was that the first mobile story? Uh, I don't know, but I like that. Um, uh, and really, uh, the message is the art of storytelling and the art of managing a narrative is constant. The difference with technology is being able to manage that narrative when you're participating with, for us, millions and millions of different storytellers. And, um, uh, but we really do need to work with the technology industries uh, to ensure that we um, uh, develop ease of participation and ease of curation. I see. So if you had to sum up the last year in interactive and advertising for the Coca-Cola company, what would, what would the title be? The title of our last 12 months would be feeling confident that we're figuring it out with the right kind of partnerships at the right level of both organizations. We've moved our partnerships away from just sales and media buying to engineering and uh, uh, creativity. And those relationships are yielding a whole lot of new opportunities. So, um, but we are figuring it out. We're by no means done with our point of view and what digital can really bring to our business. So what are you looking forward to most in the next year? Over the next 12 months, by far the most exciting thing for us is going to be the London 2012 Olympics campaign for Coke Red. Uh, we've got a tremendous music-driven platform working with a number of top, top athletes and also the British music producer Mark Ronson. So uh, with different technology partners, we are going to be getting the world to move to the beat of the London Olympics and really start to share a very different music-driven experience. Interesting. Will it be even bigger than World Cup, which you, you helped orchestrate, I know? Well, um, there won't be as many markets activating um, uh, the Olympics as the World Cup. We had 160 markets activate the uh, World Cup. Um, but I am confident that the uh, conversation will be just as loud in those markets they're activating. Excellent. Well, you heard it here first from IBA Mix. Thank you, Jonathan, for coming.